This individual named Sam Britton, who we were told a few months ago is one of the first, quote, openly gender fluid individuals in federal government leadership. And he works uh, for the Department of Energy. He is not an appointee by Biden. Uh, he is uh, he's just a bureaucrat that was recently hired and uh, he was recently charged with felony theft last month after stealing a woman's luggage at MSP airport. Let me tell you a little bit about Sam Britton. If you don't already know, it can kind of give us context for why he would do something like this. So this is according to alphanews.org. The MIT grad went viral earlier this year when he announced his new role as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Office of Spent Fuel and Waste Disposition in the U.S. Department of Energy. Prior to working in government, Britton was an anti-conversion therapy activist who taught Kink 101 workshops on college campuses. By the way, conversion therapy is not something that is happening in a pervasive sense at in any way in the United States, what left-wing activists mean when they say conversion therapy is basically just counseling of people who are confused about their gender or sexuality and want help with that. They believe that you should only be affirming someone's gender confusion and their any form of sexual deviance rather than getting them the actual holistic help that they need. So when he says that he is an anti-conversion therapy activist, that's what he is talking about. Um, he taught kink 101 workshops on college campuses. According to the National Pulse, a photo from one of these workshops shows Britain in a dress as he stands over three males in leather dog masks. And the I mean, the photo itself is not sexually explicit. We can probably show you on YouTube uh, one of the. What something that he said um, to uh, in a 2016 Metro Weekly article is that he has a pup play fetish. Disgusting. One of the hardest things about being a handler is that I've honestly handler. What? I've honestly had people ask, wait, you have sex with animals? And then he goes on to say, oh, they believe it's abusive. It's taking advantage of someone. I'm very confused about whether or not this person is actually engaging in bestiality or whether it's just a fantasy. Either way, disgusting. He is also a member of the sacrilegious drag queen society called Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. And they have lots of disgusting sexually explicit names for their characters and according to the Washington Examiner, Britton once talked with college students about how he enjoys tying up his significant other like a table and eating his dinner on him while he watches Star Trek. And so he's a freak. He's a sexually deviant freak. And he is very outspoken about all of his paraphilias and what seems like violent and um humiliating sexual activity that he is not content to uh, keep in the privacy of his own home and bedroom, but actually wants to publicize and to teach other people about on college campuses. This is one of the bureaucrats that is working in the Department of Energy. Um, so here's what happened, though, recently, as if that's not enough. Uh, law enforcement at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport were alerted to a missing suitcase in the baggage claim area on September 16th. The adult female victim said she flew into MSP on a Delta flight from New Orleans and went to retrieve her checked bag at Carousel 7. Airport records confirmed the Navy Blue Vera Badley roller bag a Vera Bradley roller bag arrived at 4.40 p.m. but was missing from the carousel. So law enforcement reviewed video surveillance footage from the baggage claim area and observed Britain removing a navy blue roller bag from carousel 7, according to a criminal complaint. Now, maybe you're thinking, well, it's just a mistake. This weirdo probably did have a Vera Bradley bag. Uh, well, the complaint says that Britain removed a luggage a tag from the bag, placed it into a handbag he was carrying, and then left the area at a quick pace. Britain arrived at MSP Airport around 4.27 p.m. on an American Airlines flight from Washington, D.C., but did not check a bag, meaning he had no reason to visit baggage claim, according to the complaint. Oh. Police showed the surveillance video to the victim and she confirmed it was her bag. Britain left the airport in an Uber for a stay in the Intercontinental St. Paul Riverfront Hotel where he checked in with the blue bag, the complaint says. He returned to MSP on September 18th with the bag in hand for a departing flight back to Washington, D.C., authorities allege. Surveillance video from Dulles International Airport shows Britain traveling with the bag on an October 9th return trip from Europe. 
The complaint notes, the victim said the estimated value of the bag is about, and the contents, about $2,300. Uh, police questioned Britton about the bag on October 9th in a phone call. And he said that uh, uh, when they asked, did you take anything out of the bag that didn't belong to you? And he said, not that I know of. He later admitted to taking the bag, but said the clothes inside were his, according to the complaint. If I had taken the wrong bag, I'm happy to return it, but I don't have any clothes for another individual. That was my clothes. That was my clothes. When I opened the bag, he told police, according to the complaint. Britton allegedly called the investigating officer, though. Two hours later and apologized for not being completely honest. This time, Britton said he took the bag because he was tired and thought it was his, the complaint says. He allegedly told police that he realized the bag didn't belong to him when he opened it up at the hotel, but got nervous and didn't know what to do. Worried that people would think he stole the bag, Britton told police he left the victim's clothes in the drawers in the hotel room, according to the complaint. Uh, Britton said he brought the bag... Uh, he brought the bag back to D.C. with him because it would have been weirder to leave a bag in the hotel room, according to the police. Police told Britain how to return the bag to Delta, but as of October 27th, the victim still had not received her bag back. Police also learned that no clothing was recovered from the hotel room, so he did not leave it in the hotel room. Britain's first court hearing is scheduled for December 19th in Hennepin County. Alpha News attempted to contact Britain via email, but received an automatic reply saying he is on leave and unable to access his email. So, the dude didn't never check a bag. He went to the baggage claim, even though he didn't check a bag. He decided that he was going to steal a bag, probably that he could tell was a female's bag. And it's probably because he wanted to steal women's clothes because he gets off on that. Because as we've talked about many times, so many people that have these uh, so-called identities really just have sexual perversions that they are trying to indulge and get other people to affirm. So that is my theory and my guess about what went on here. You know, it used to be that we realized that when men wear female clothing, that they are mentally unstable in general, that it wasn't something to affirm, but a reason to say, oh, you know what? That person is probably not someone that we should um, allow to have a whole lot of influence or responsibility. Certainly, we don't allow them around certain kinds of people. I mean, my husband talks about that there was a guy in his community growing up that would wear women's dresses and ride a bike around. And okay, people just knew that that person is strange. That's certainly not someone that you would ask to come teach your class or to read you know, books to kids at the at the library. It's probably not someone that should be hired by the federal government. And yet now we've just accepted these uh, these so-called identities. We've normalized them. We've mainstreamed them. And not only that, but we have actually glorified them to the point to where we are allowing unstable people to run things like the energy department. I would say that that is a problem. We've gone too far in the whole uh, destigmatizing movement. I mean, some things need to be stigmatized. Uh, men wearing women's clothing is not normal. It is not indicative of a stable individual. I mean, this is Silence of the Lambs type stuff, type perversion that I think is really worrisome. I'm glad that he is being held accountable for this theft by law enforcement. I hope that he is not able to get a job in the government, but knowing the corruption that's in our government, I'm sure that he will be back at his job post hence. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here. And let's go, Brandon.